Ezekiel chapter number 16. We're going to find out here the love of God for one people, one nation. And we're not going to read about America. We will read about America later in this chapter, but not earlier. Again, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Inspiration. Son of man, cause Jerusalem to know her abomination. That's why you preach. And say, Thus saith the Lord God of Jerusalem. Well, God did not call Ezekiel to be a fluffy preacher. You don't learn nothing by sugary outlines. You just get sicker and sicker. Thy birth and thy nativity is the land of Cana. Thy father was an Ammonite, and thy mother a Hittite. As for thy nativity, in the days that thou was born, thy navel was not cut, neither was thou washed in water to supple thee. Thou was not salted at all, nor swaddled at all. So he's talking about the nation of Israel. Listen, when you were a baby, you were not taken care of. Yeah, he tells where you come from. You're from an Ammonite. You're from a Hittite. And that's the call of Genesis 11 and 12. Come out of, of Ur. Come out of those gods. Separate yourself. And when I called you to be a nation, no one took care of you. I would think that, that neighbor was not cut. That would be the umbilical cord. God has attached himself to these people. They're washing the word that neither was that washed in the waters. There was no baptism. And salt would have been would have been the thing early times they'd done. They would put the baby in salt. Salt is is a chemical that, that helps, cleans, uh, removes irritations. If you see something healthy being done, but they weren't, that wasn't done to them. And swallowed, the Lord Jesus Christ was swallowed. No, none, none I pity thee to do any of these unto thee, to have compassion upon thee. But thou was cast out in open field to the loathing of thy person in the day that thou was born. From the beginning of Israel, Infancy. No one has ever cared. No one really cared about Abraham leaving. No one really cared about a, a man, Abraham, and a woman, Sarah. But God did. If Abraham or Sarah was ever to be mentioned outside the Bible, I don't know where it would be. Who is this man Abram? Who is this woman Sarai? Who is this child Isaac outside the Bible? When I passed by thee and saw thee polluted in thy own blood, I, saw, I said unto thee, when thou was in thy blood, live. Yea, I said unto thee, when thou was in thy blood, live. Calling out to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I, you are my people. You're dead. Now you're alive. I have caused thee to multiply as the bud of the field. Well, how many buds are there in a field? Thou hast increased in waxing great, and thou art come to... Excellent ornaments. There'd be things you wear most brilliant, most notable. And so buds of the field, sand as in the, the, the seashore, as stars of the heaven. Look how God describes these people. From one man and one woman. Thy breasts are fashioned. Uh whether man or woman he likes to, there's nothing wrong with them. If it's for a woman, it would be milk of nourishment. 
and thy hair is grown would be taken as a woman long hair whereas thou was naked and bare almost like E you know it's not for perversion it's not for pornography it's how God sees us God sees us without our clothes God sees us who we are you can put anything you want on it he'll see you as a sinner or as a as a sinner washed in the blood now when I pass by thee and looked upon thee behold thy time was the time of love young and I spread my skirt over thee God is covering not aprons made by man so this is the second time God speaks about covering his creation and not an animal like he did with Adam and Eve he says I spread my skirt over thee isn't that funny God has a skirt Just reading the words and covered thy nakedness yea I swear unto thee and entered into a covenant with thee saith the Lord God and thou becameth mine where do you read that story in the book of Ruth when Ruth goes to Boaz in the middle of the night and lays at his feet so that skirt covering over is a marriage vow of some kind of of an oriental custom that says you're mine then wash I thee with water now he washes after he has taken notice the baptism comes after the cleaning comes after God has taken you how do you get baptized when do you get uh, get cleaned today after you have received the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior then you are clean then yea I thoroughly wash away thy blood from thee and I anoint thee with oil that blood I just just what you carry it's your own your own blood can't save you and there are people in places in this world today under their religion that they will do harm to themselves that cause them to bleed thinking God's going to be pleased and God just showed you that doesn't work you got to have God's blood listen even the Jew that died in Ezekiel's time would die and go to Abraham's bosom awaiting the finished work of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ that Christ died and was buried and arose from the grave and when he went through hell he picked up those Old Testament saints in Abraham's bosom still needed the blood atonement of the Lord Jesus Christ God based the salvation in the Old Testament upon your love and your conduct to him and the love but it never never paid for your sins like Christ has paid I clothe thee with broiled work that's needlepoint work real fine and they didn't have machines back there there are places today you can go and watch them do that broad work, but it was done without machines. And shod thee with badger skin. Well, that's interesting. Badger skin was one of the the coverings of the tabernacle. I girded thee about with fine linen. He may be talking about that that tabernacle that followed them in the world. Uh, they followed in the wilderness. Excuse me. And I cover thee with silk. I deck thee with ornaments. I put bracelets upon thy hands and a chain on thy neck. He's decorated them. Chain is a, is a th symbol of authority, as uh, Joseph was given a chain. I would assume that Moses would have had a chain, being under Pharaoh. I deck thee with ornaments and I put bracelets upon thy hands. Well, that's an interesting thing upon thy hands. Where do you wear bracelets on your hands? It's your wrist. 
The Bible likens your wrist and your hands together. So a bone is not broken of him. It's quite possible that those nails went through the wrist. I know what some people say. And I put a jewel on thy forehead. Some kind of turban or something that you would wear. It was not made into the forehead. It put on it. And earrings in thy ears. And a beautiful crown upon thy head. But God has decked Israel with beauty, with comfortableness, with jewels to say, here she is. read a little further before I make that remark. Thus was thou decked with gold and silver, and thy raiment was fine linen and silk, and broidered work. Thou didst eat fine flour, the best flour, and honey, and oil, and that was exceedingly beautiful. Beauty is vain, Proverbs said. The woman that, that follows the Lord and obeys the Lord, she, and here's a people that were. And I forget what that verse says totally, but, but if you read this with Proverbs 31, it shows that Israel at one time was a pleasure to God outside of her beauty. You read the history of the Jews, how Abraham said, here, she's my sister. Isaac. Let his children, you know, I like this child because he gives me meat. Rebecca, I like this child because he, he can do home things. Jacob, look at Jacob alone. Look at the story of his wives and the way he got his children. And then look at the stories of his children. One slept with one, one of his wives. And God says, even through all that, you know what? They were right in my eyes. They were my people. And thou was exceedingly beautiful, and thou did prosper into a kingdom. Up to David. That was a kingdom. Or if God's talking about before they wanted Saul, where God was the king. And then he told Samuel, he said, they haven't rejected you, they rejected me. It was supposed to be God as the king. And thy renown went forth among the heathen for thy beauty. Uh-oh. For it was perfect through my comeliness, which I had put upon thee, saith the Lord God. Now, with all the, the, the earrings, the bracelets, the fine clothing, where do you ever see God painting her face? Where do you see images in the Bible where women were to put makeup on? There is no makeup described in the beauty of Israel here. We saw gold. We saw something for the forehead. Where is the painting of the face? You know what you're doing? You're covering up the face that God has given you. And if it's an accident that has happened to you, an accident should never have been happened. Why don't you just reveal who God has made you to be and be the person that God stopped deceiving people? Because if you fear the Lord, you have the beauty of God, no matter what you look like. And then with years, that it's going to go away. Beauty doesn't last forever. Character does. But thou didst trust in thy own beauty. Uh-oh. That's what Satan did. And we're going to read about that later on in Ezekiel. Satan got, look at me. Look who I am. Ho, ho, ho. Look at me. Why is he getting all the worship down there? If you know your Bible. I ought to get it. And play as the harlot because of thy renown. The, the famous, the well known. Now we're starting to get into America. And pours out thy fornications on everyone that passes by. His it was. So they fell for anybody. 
and everything. So, one nation under God. Capital G or small g? Check out the yellow pages under religions. And see how many gods there are. Count all the churches, even not in the yellow pages, who have not identif identified themselves as of yet, maybe with a phone number. They're maybe in a, a living room trying to build up. Or in a, a, a college campus trying to have a, What about all those things? America is full of gods, not God. The land of Canaan was full of gods all around. And God told them, when you get into that land, wipe them out. You know what they did? They took them in and added more and more. And we read in Jeremiah, you go back and find the study. You read in Jeremiah, they had a thing on every street in Jerusalem. Even in the temple of God, they had their little fornications. And I'm not talking about sexual fornication, even though that was probably happening. I'm talking about fornication and harlotry of images and idol worship of fallen gods. And of thy garments thou didst take, and deck thy and deckest thy high places with diverse colors. Rainbow? Would that be a diverse colors? They made their own tabernacles. With different clothing, with different cloths. You see that all over the Orient. You know, they have these beautiful uh, rugs that sell for high prices. You know what the story is behind those things. And place the harlots there upon. Where? Upon the high places. And it's, it's not just sexual harlotry. It's worshiping false gods in the eyes of God. This is his people. They have taken their beauty. They have taken what God has given to them. What we're going to read. And given it to the heathen. Has given it to false gods. The like things shall not come. Neither shall it be so. Thou hast also taken thy fair jewels of my gold. And my silver. Which I have given thee, and madest to thyself images of men, Jesus, the painting of the twelve at the Last Supper. Your church is decorated with, with all the men, and didst commit whoredom with them. With who? The images of men. And we're not talking sexual here, we're talking idolatry. Idolatry in the Bible is likened to a whore. You can, I can bring you, I can drive you to any church and can show you these images of men portrayed on the walls and on the altars, and they just love them. And woe be if you went over there and popped the head off one of them. Oh boy, you were set the whole day. There have been churches who called the police because at Christmas time the infant Jesus has been stolen. You can't steal my Jesus. Be quite hard to get up to heaven and walk away with, with him without God knowing. Thou tookest thy broidered garments and covered them, and thou hast set my oil, my incense before them. Where was this stuff found? It was found in the temple of God that Solomon built. They are bringing it out of the temple and they are giving it to the fallen gods. There are churches today that were right in the history. They served God, they had the right Bible, and they have changed to the modern God. And God says about that church that has changed from the Bible, that has changed with the ways, that has come up with the worldly ways. You are a whore! How would you like to have that new name written down for all eternity? What's my new name, Lord? Whore. In heaven? That's what you are. That wouldn't be a name you wouldn't want in heaven. Would that be a holy name? That would be a name that what the Bible calls you. 
when you have taken what was God's and given it to Satan and given it to the world. God says you're a whore. I didn't say it. Scripture. Don't get mad at me. If you have changed your Bible, the Bible says you're a whore. If you're giving your church over to idolatry and imagery, you are a whore. And what does the Bible speak about Revelation? That great what? Whore. What is that Catholic church system? It is a whore. We see her in Ezekiel chapter 16. She has stolen what Israel has done. She has not read Ezekiel 16 and say, Oh, I need to get rid of all those statues. No, we're going to keep them. We're going to love them some more. We'll even get some more. And they do have their oil, which is not God's oil. But they say it's God's oil. And then they got the, the, the incest that they proclaim to be gods. And it's not. But they burn it as a religious. I've been in that mess. I grew up in that mess. And that mess is in Ezekiel 16, 594 B.C. And they'll tell you the Catholic Church started A.D. after Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ wasn't around as a human. He wasn't born in B.C. B.C. means before Christ. And we see that church. And we see America here in Ezekiel 16. My meat also which I gave thee. Fine flour and oil and honey. Wherewith I fed thee. Thou hast even set it before them for a sweet savor. And thus it was. Thus, thus it was, saith the Lord, God, you've taken my offerings, and you have given it to, let's bring it to America. You have taken the food I've given to you, and you have given it to countries that don't even believe I exist. You have given aid and comfort to Russia, who does not allow God you have given your money and your, and your stuff to China, which will not allow my Bible. You have given your money, you have given your clothes to countries that will not acknowledge the Lord Jesus Christ. You have given religions, have taught a false Jesus, a false Christ, a false gospel, a false spirit to allow and roam in your country, giving them the freedom of a piece of paper to practice the false worship of God's and image and ideology, which I call abomination, and you think you're going to say, God bless America? After what he's done to his people, Israel? You're a fool. Moreover, thou hast taken thy sons and thy daughters, whom thou hast borne unto me, and these hast thou sacrificed unto them to be devoured. Is this of thy whoredom a small matter? Revelation 2, 14 and 20. They were killing their children to Molech. In America, they are killing they are killing their children to career. It is my body. It is my life. Get your hands off me. Things haven't changed since before Christ. Then now that thou hast slain my children and delivered them to cause them to pass through the fire, that's Molech, for them. Second Kings sixteen three. 23.10, 2 Chronicles 33.6, Lamentations 3.20, 4.16. There are people who take their children and give them to religions. How can you as a parent turn your children over to a bunch of people who have been known to sodomize your, the other people's children? You are a fool to bring your family into a place that has done unspeakable things to young children, and yet you bring your children there. Why is it because of those acts that that, that, that religion hasn't closed down and shut its doors permanently? You've turned your, you have turned your children, which supposed to be to God, unto Satan. Any parent can buy a Bible. And read what they're supposed to read. 
and in all thy abominations in thy whoredom. Thou hast not remembered the days of thy youth. You forgot where you came from. You forgot your Bethlehem. You forgot Abraham. Oh, we're of Abraham, they told Jesus. Yeah, but Jesus said, you know, if you were really of Abraham, you would not have tried to kill me. If you were really Abraham, you would have received me. When thou was naked and bare and was polluted in thy blood. You know, a lot of Christians, they forget where they came from. I remember where my walk began. It began at Calvary, but it began at 773 Broad Street, Waterford, Connecticut, my grandma's coffee table with a man named Joe Whitmore with an open Bible to show me that who I was. And he didn't give me no pudding. He didn't give me no flour. He gave me what it was. He gave me hell, fire, sweating that I was a sinner. And except I trust in Jesus Christ as my Savior, I was going to go to hell and I was going to burn there for it. Thank you, Joe, for telling me the truth. Every once in a while, I go back to my grandma's coffee table. I heard a guy one time, if you didn't come to his pulpit, at his altar, by his pulpit, you weren't getting right. Listen, I went to a coffee table as an altar. And there are all kinds of altars that people, I wouldn't even know where they went. And you would probably never classify them as an altar. I wonder how many beds since Acts have been people's altars. You got to remember where you came. Now you may not physically be able to go back to the place, but in your heart you should be able to go back to where Christ came in your life by you telling him you were a sinner and there's nothing else you can do that you invited him in into your life for a savior, for a for a saving, for a sweet fellowship and to get back to the fellowship with God. You should be able to go back to that day in your heart if all you can. To remember who you were. I don't like to think about who I was. Many people don't know who I was before I was saved. I was a vicious, rotten kind of person involved in liquor, involved in smoking, involved in sexual, involved in all kinds of, uh, you would call me one of those, uh, I forget what you call it in the school, hoodlum. That's from my wife who knew me in school, but that's not the word I was thinking about. Uh, um, you picked on a bully. I can remember some of the people I picked on. That was me before Christ. Now I can go back to remember who I was after Christ. I'm sorry to say I can remember when my dad and I had the first beer. I'm sorry I can say that. But I can remember the second day, the day after I got saved. I got saved on a Saturday and Sunday afternoon. I ran back to my dad and I told him he's a sinner. And unless he confesses and gets right, he's going to hell. I got that memory. I just had a cousin. I just had an aunt this year pass away. I don't know where they went, but I told them where to go. Go to Jesus. And it came to pass after all thy wickedness. Woe, woe unto thee. Saith the Lord God. Look at that. Look at look at parentheses. That means this is a special point needs to make. When we're talking about wickedness, whoa, whoa, unto you. Don't preach hell. Whoa, whoa, unto you. That thou hast also built unto thee in an imminent place. And has made thee a high place in every street. That's exactly what Jeremiah said. There's your steeples. Baptist churches with a steeple to remind you of the male organ playing music. Imagine hearing uh, uh, hymnals coming out, a thing that is to be from history, from Babylon, uh, a, a thing that represents the male body with hymns coming from it. Every high place. What's so high place? And they put a cross on that high place. That's exactly what they did in Genesis to reach to God by their own man-made bricks. Thou hast built thy high place at every head of the way. So every intersection, every street, and has made thy beauty to be abhorred in God's eye. You may look beautiful to the heathen, but not to God. 
You know what? You know the prodigal son. You know when he got a beautiful look by God. When he was dripping with pig slime. You say, how is that? Because when he was in that pig slime, he said, you know what? Look at my father. Look at everything he's got. I'm going to go with my father. I'm going to repent of my sins. I'm going to get right and say, I'm not worthy. That's when he looked beautiful to Because he got up and did exactly what he, I believe he got saved in that pig mire. Because not only did he think about it in his heart, but he went and did it. And has opened thy feet to everyone that passes by and multiplied thy horn. You know what America has done to religions? She has opened the doors to every religion that's come in. Go ahead. Settle down. Get your whatever your IRS pass. And we, you don't have to pay taxes. And the one that is not religion. The one that is of God. Shut up. Don't bring that book in. We don't want to hear it. Call the police on them. And don't tell me. I just had a religion yesterday. Tell me if I got any closer. In 10 seconds, they were going to call the police. You won't even believe who they are when they come knocking on everyone else's door. Don't tell me. Thou hast also committed fornication with the Egyptian, who God told you not to go back. Do not go back in Egypt. Solomon, do not go back for horses. Do not go back for wives. Do not. And he did. And he turned his life into building all kinds of things for God, for all his wives, to please his wives. Thy neighbors. They're thy neighbors. But if they're not serving God, and God told you not to be with them, don't be with them. Braid of flesh. Now, if you know the body of men, you know that what that verse is talking about. There are a certain race of people that have great of flesh and has increased thy whoredoms to provoke me to anger. Look what we just read. Everything from 16 down has provoked God to anger, and you can find it in one church, and you can find it in the churches of America, and you can find it in America. And the Bible says, I'm not going to bless you. He says, I'm going to be angry with you. Behold, therefore I have stretched out my hand over thee, and have diminished thine ordinary food, famine, and delivered thee unto the will of them that hate thee, the sword, the daughters of the Philistines, which are ashamed of thy lewd way. Even the Philistines are ashamed of what you're doing, Israel. You are making people that hate me, that worship a guy that has a, a fish on top of his head, and goes around and says he's holy, I mean, sorry, but wears a fish on his head. They are ashamed of what you're doing. Thou hast played the whore also with the Assyrians. They're the ones that took away Israel, north, because thou was unsitchable. Yea, thou hast played the harlot with them, and yet could not be satisfied. You can't be satisfied with your sins. You've got to have more. And when you get more, you've got to have the Morris. And when you get the Morris, you've got to have the extreme of Morris. I know those ain't words, but... Sins can never be satisfied. Thou hast moreover multiplied thy for fornication in the land of Cana. Notice he doesn't call it the land of Israel. The land has not changed. It's still the heathen land. North America is still Native American in the eyes of God. We're doing the same things that the Indians did. Unto Chaldea. And yet thou was not satisfied herewith. They were satisfied with God. There was a widow man. She she went in there, closed the doors behind her son, and they just filled up that oil, filled up that oil, and they had enough to pay the debts, and they had enough to survive on. I call that satisfied. How weak is thy heart, saith the Lord God, seeing thou does all these things, the work of an imperious, orish woman. How would you like to have that? How would you like to have that title given to you? Not by your husband, not by anybody, but by God. Have you read what he describes this church age as? In that thou buildest 
thy eminent place in the head of every way, and maketh thy high place on every street, and it has not been as a harlot, in that thou scornest higher. But as a wife that commits adultery, he's likened it to a whore. Now he's likened to an adulteress. Because they're married to God, Hosea says. He says, go get yourself a whore. Wow. Did you see what Hosea did? He went and got himself a whore and married her. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, you know what, Israel? What? That's just like you. Oh. They went and got an adulterous woman. God says, that's like you. That's what you are. And the wife that committed adultery would take a stranger instead of her husband. S. Strangers. They give gifts to all whores. But thou givest thy gifts to all the lovers. And hires them. That they may come in unto thee on every side of thy whore. He says, listen, you know what? Whores get gifts. But you know what? You're the whore. And you're giving them the gifts. And you're giving them my gifts. And the contrary is in thee from another woman, in thy whoredoms, whereas none follow thee to commit whoredoms. And in that thou givest a reward, and no reward is given unto thee, therefore thou art contrary. They're not giving you nothing. You're giving it to them. Man, you are a backsliding whore. <laughs> you are so stupid. You're not getting the gifts. You're giving them. Now I think what we're going to do is, well, I think we're going to cut right there. I, we may make this chapter three outlines, because this is, this is just full of things. But what we've seen, Israel, let's look at it right now, 16, 1 to 7. God loved Israel in all the time of her infancy. Be ye as children, Jesus said, isn't that what he said, be as little children? Aren't children sweet? Aren't they just great? Don't they just fall for their parents? You know, they throw them in there and they expect daddy to catch you. 16, 8 through 14. God reflects Israel to be a marriage to him. He looks back to their, to their wedding day together. And when he gave his bride... All that he could give her. 16, 15, 34. Israel plays the harlot. After the wedding. She has taken all the wedding gifts. Maybe a table. Where everybody gives you the gift. She has taken all those gifts that the friend and the family of God and of... We already read, but I'm just relating to a wedding. The family of both sides and the friends are giving these two couples all kinds of pri uh, prizes, all kinds of gifts, which God gave it to Israel. God loaded that table up for his bride. No family, no friends gave the gifts. She has taken all those gifts. She went into whoredom and gave all those gifts to the people she slept with and then be with her husband. That's an interesting thing. To get. And we're not even done with it. We're looking at what Israel was and what she's doing. And it fits America today. What Israel's doing as a whore. And we're going to close there. And we'll end with the word whore, but we'll close now before we end with whore.